that you would allow your presence to come among us that you allow your spirit to flow glory and honor you be all glory and honor thank you thank you thank you god let's give him another hand of praise lord thank you king of glory blessed be your holy name hallelujah hallelujah someone a high five and bless them in Jesus name let's thank God for the worship team let's give glory to God thank you thank you what a blessing to be together in the house of the Lord and as I was coming in they were reading the names of the different church leaders here. It's always a big blessing to have the leaders of God's people come together. Come together to worship the Lord together. To call upon his name together. The spirit of the Lord rejoices when that happens. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for being a witness for this happening. And I want to say to you, this is just the day of small beginnings. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's much, much more that the Lord is going to unfold before us. Amen. Amen. <coughs> uh, let me start by reading a scripture in the book of Isaiah. Now, let me say one thing. Today, yes, the last two days, I have been sharing what I call most, more like a foundational sharing. Foundation, just to draw our hearts to Him. And to bring us to a place of readiness. To break our fallow ground. Today. I would like to do a little bit of teaching. Still in line with the scripture I have been repeating over and over and over again. But when a person hears the word of the kingdom. And does not understand it. The evil one comes and steals it away from him. And I want to share about a very, very central, a core concept to the kingdom of God. A concept that I had very little understanding of. Concept though I was serving the Lord. But as I want, I'm preparing to share on that, I'm reminded of a promise the Lord gave me many, many, many years ago. 1989. And he said to me, everywhere you go, when you share this word of my heart and the people humbly receive it and, and submit to it tell them I will come down 
Get a and I will heal their diseases. Get a I will set them free. Get a I will intervene in their struggles. Get a and I will show them the goodness of the Lord. Get a Not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of the Living God. And so, as I share today, I'm reminded of the words in Isaiah where the Lord said, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. My prayer is that even as the word comes to you, that there will be a Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me. And I want to assure you, as much as that is genuine before God, the Lord will touch your life. The Lord will come into those areas that you feel you cannot do anything about. It doesn't have to be that Pastor John prayed for me. It's all about your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's share this word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you because you are God of your promise. You keep your word. You watch over your word to fulfill it. And today I stand to claim that promise that you spoke before me. And I want to pray that as many people as open their spirits today and receive your word with faith and submission, that, Lord, you shall intervene in their lives. You shall bring healing. You shall bring deliverance. You shall bring freedom. You shall bring breakthrough in their homes, in their finances, in their lives, in their health. And, Lord, you shall bring a testimony in their lives. That you are a faithful God. Not by power, nor by might. But by the spirit of your living God. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and give you glory. In Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a hand. Thank More you, Lord. All. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to start by just sharing a little bit of a, 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 a long story, but I'll share something very small. One day, we had just planted, we had been working in the rural areas. We had planted many, many, many churches. And then we felt led to come to the city, to the capital city. And we came in and planted a church, our first church in the capital city. And it was thriving, it was doing well. Then something happened. It started like a little a small rumor. Something that I heard and said, oh, come on. Don't even think about it. But it grew and grew and soon it was threatening to divide us as a ministry soon it was threatening to divide our home and suddenly panic gripped me and I realized it is going to split up we are going to bring reproach to the name of the Lord we are going to become a byword in the city. And I was so much in panic. I said, Lord, I will do anything. Anything you ask me. That you may save this situation. I will do anything, but please don't let the enemy. And the Holy Spirit replied to me, take a fast of 30 days on water alone. I said, yes, Lord. I'll do that. I announced to the church, 
And I invited people to join me. And I offered, I'm going to be teaching on fasting every day. That evening when I went back home, I was uh, laying the fast before the Lord, asking for the grace. To me, do not do any teaching until I'm through with you. I said, okay, yes, Lord. So on Monday, when I went to church, I said, I'm not going to teach until the Lord is through with me. I don't know, maybe it will take one week or so, but and I want to say to you, the Lord was not through with me until the end of the fast. In other words, he did not ask me to go teach about fasting. He wanted me in the fast. When I started the fast, immediately, the Lord began to show me things and to interpret for me things that were happening, words that were being spoken, conspiracies that had been going on, and showing me the demonic forces behind those things. And was ministering to me, it's not your brother, it's not your sister. It's the spirits that are working behind them. And he was also showing me how the enemy was deceiving them in their own minds. Convincing everyone that they are right in their own position. And that was setting us up to break up. Because everyone saw themselves right. So every day he continued to unfold things before Sometimes I just cried and say, how could we be so gullible? Other times I laughed and said, this is stupid. How could we fall for that? And by the end of the two weeks, he had not only revealed the schemes of the devil to me, but he had also given me solutions. He said, when you sit with this one, talk to them like this. When you sit with this one, say this to them. And after you've spoken to each of them, then bring them together. And refocus them with this, these words. And says, Fear not. I'm going to heal the rifts among you. You will come back together and be one. I was so overjoyed. I wanted to go out and implement what I had received from him. But I had a problem. I had made a vow to fast for 30 days. Now it's just two weeks. I have all the answers I needed. So I was thinking, how am I going to spend two more weeks without any clear focus? So I went before the Lord and said, Lord, may I break the fast? So that I can go and obey you. This is the reason I came. In... So can I, now that you have answered everything, can I go? And what God answered me blew me away. This is what he said to me. If all you have got eyes to see is the work of your calling and you don't see anything else, then I want you to know today you will never accomplish it. He said, what? 
All I want is to obey you. And do the work you give me. And now you are saying, if all I can see is the work of the calling, I will never accomplish it. I was confused. I said, Lord, I don't understand. And then he asked me a question. Do you know what I'm doing in your nation, Uganda? I thought, no. I don't know. Then he said, do you know what I'm doing in the nations of the world? I said, I don't know. Then he asked me, if you don't know what I'm doing in the nations, how can you be part of the Great Commission? The Great Commission is to the nations. Great Commission Go ye in the world and make disciples of every nation. If you don't know what I'm doing in the nations, how can you be part of the Great Commission? And if you are not part of the Great Commission, then what are you part of? I felt hit and rebuked. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I have never heard anybody teach on God and the nations. I can't pretend. I don't know anything. You know what he said next? Then continue fasting. So I, there I got my answer. Do I break my fast? He said continue fasting. He said I'm going to show you the place of nations in my plan. And I'm going to reveal to you what nations are. How I have always worked with nations. How I'm working with nations today. And how the end will only come when my work in the nations is accomplished. Whoa. Sure. He said, go back and read the Bible like you've never read it before. From Genesis, From Genesis to Revelation. And just be humble and open to learn. Beloved, I went back and started reading from Genesis. And that is when I noticed for the first time that the word nations does not appear in the Bible from chapter 1 to chapter 10. It's only in chapter 10 it begins to appear. Before chapter 10, there is no word nations. And I wish we had the time. I would like to go in and say, how was it introduced? What was the significance of the introduction of nations in God's plan? Then I saw God called Abraham. He did not say, I'm going to make you into a ministry. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to make you into a nation. And all the nations of the world shall be blessed. You. And all along, God dealt with Israel as a nation. At first, we think he's just dealing with a family. Family of Abraham. Family of Isaac. Family of Jacob. But when it came to the time of Jacob and his children going to Egypt, Jacob hesitated. Should I leave this land of the promise to go to Egypt? And the Lord said, Fear not, Abraham. Go to Egypt. For there, 
I will turn you into a nation. It was in Egypt that the promise of a seed of Abraham becoming a nation. Families, they came out as a nation. Hallelujah. Amen. And you remember all those plagues and uh, mighty miracles that God worked through Moses? Why did he work them? Go back and read the word. He explained each time. He said, Moses, go and do this. And it's going to result in this. That the nations may know there is no any other God but the God of Israel. He was speaking to by doing things to Israel. Another time he said to Moses, I'm going to do this. Oh. There is no other God but the God of Israel. Another time you say, I'm going to do this. That Israel may know there is no other God but the God of Israel. God was doing these miracles but in his he was ministering to nations. Not only the nations of the world, but also Israel. Come to think of it. How in We see prophets in the Bible. The prophets of today prophesy a lot. And most of their prophecies are to individuals. When I go back in the Bible, I see the prophets of the Bible. They speak to Israel. They speak to Assyria. They speak to Babylon. They speak to Egypt. They address nations. Because our God is the God of nations. God revealed to me at that time that nations are God's building block by which he build this, builds the kingdom. That's why when he was giving the great commission he said go and make disciples of every nation baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Spirit teaching them everything that I've told, commanded you and lo I'm with you to the end of the age in the book of Luke 2444 when he appeared to the disciples after resurrection he said this is what I was saying to you all along that the son of man had to come and suffer and die and rise again and then repentance and forgiveness of sins would be preached to every nation beginning in Jerusalem and you are the witnesses of it. in Matthew 24 14 he said and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world to be a witness to every nation. Then the end shall come. I normally stand among pastors in Uganda and ask them, do you know what it means for the gospel to become a witness to the nation? If you don't know, how will you know that it has happened? And I normally ask them, 
Do you know why God sent you where you are? To plant a church? To start a ministry? And do you know the results God is looking for? If you don't know, how do you know you are performing or you are not performing? How do you know whether you are not just a busy bee? Jesus. And what, what influences your relationship with other pastors in the Because if you don't know that, you will neglect those relationships. You will abuse those relationships. And sometimes you think you can do without them. Because you did not understand the word of the kingdom. I was there. The Bible became a new book for me. Day and night, I was just reading and reading and reading. And then one moment, when I was worshipping, the Spirit fell upon me. And He began to speak to me about His calling on my country. And he said to me, I called you as an individual. And I gave you a ministry. So that means there is, you have an anointing from me on your life. And you have an anointing from me on the ministry. But none of that compares with my anointing on your nation. He says there will be times you stand in your personal calling. There will be times you stand as head of the ministry that started by the calling. But there will be times when you stand as a representative of your nation. Standing for God's kingdom on your nation. And said, when that time comes, your authority equals the authority of government leaders. You relate with government leaders at the level of being an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And I've seen this. My first time to fly to Europe and America, my travel agent messed up things. He didn't think I was going to get the visas. I had to process three visas in one week. The visa of Israel, visa of UK, visa of US. And in those days, it was so difficult. And they would ask you, bring proof that you have ties to your country. Bring title deeds, marriage certificate, baptismal cards. So he didn't think I would get the visa. I went to the British Embassy first. And they said, we are going to give you a visa. But it will take four days. So come back after four days. And I said to the counselor, can you give me back my passport? I will come back in four days for the visa. Because I need to process the visa for Israel. Now, my travel agent was an, an Israeli. His dad was a diplomat. And I told him, can you process this for me? He said, yes. If you'll pay my ticket, I'll fly to Nairobi. I'll work the visa for you. I said, how long, is, how do you, how long do you think it will take? He said, my, my dad will call the ambassador. It will just take two days. I said, okay. 
Kar all right. I gave him the money. Kabo fa chale. He flew to Nairobi. Aya Nairobi. But the time was supposed to come back. Na go tla mela ngo khut. He missed the flight. Al afoso ke flight. He was supposed to come back in the early morning flight. And that very same day, I was supposed to be at the American embassy for my visa. And he didn't come in time. He arrived after the embassy had closed. And he was saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pastor John. I said, Amos, I don't want to hear apologies. I'm praying. You do what you have to do. We have to see the consul today. I have to get my visa. I said, I, I don't know how to, what to do. I said, I don't know what you have to do. But I know my God makes a way where there is no way. He said, let me talk to my dad. So they went for lunch together with his dad. While they were coming back, dad stepped in a pothole and had a bad injury. They rushed him to hospital. Two hours later, Amos comes back. He's sitting in his office. He tells me everything about his dad. And he says, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry too. Now let us pray. I'm going to be praying. You take the phone. Call the embassy. Explain everything that happened. How you missed your flight. How I have to travel. I am praying God will talk to them. And then I said, Pastor John. I said, Amos. Amos. So he went to the office. I stayed in the office. And started praying. After about 40 minutes, came and said, Pastor John. John? The ambassador says, ambassador go to the embassy now. The consul is ready to meet you. I said, come with me. We go together. We went to the embassy. And when we arrived, we, we asked for the secretary of the ambassador. She came and said, you were Pastor John? I said, yes. I said, okay. She went to the consul's office. Says, the gentleman is here that you are supposed to see. And he came out. He said, you have your passport with you? I said, yes. Come back tomorrow for the visa. Now, I can give you over 10 stories like that. With different embassies, the, embassies the French, French, the Canadian, the Canadian, the Canadian, they rejected us. Canada, Bahana, we were in Seattle, America, and were supposed to go to Canada. Canada. They said, you should have processed the visa in Uganda. But in Uganda. Said, okay. okay. All right. So we left the embassy. As we were going back to the hotel, we got a phone call. A senator from Ontario wants to talk to you. We got on the phone and said, what exactly did they explain? They said we should have processed in Uganda. He says, that's no reason to deny a visa. Go back to the embassy. I'm going to talk to the ambassador. We went back. And as we were sitting there, the ambassador who was upstairs came down and said, where is Pastor John and there were three people and said, what happened? We explained to him and said, which officer, which, which window? He said, that one there. <laughs> And he went to the window. I don't know what he said to him. And afterwards he said, to call you. And when he called us and went to the window, he said, hey, you did not have to report to the ambassador. 
He said, we did not report. Then why did he get involved? I said, that's not us. It's not part of us. It's your statesman in Ontario. We got our visas and went, flew to Vancouver. I have seen this in my own country. I've seen this there's a time I went to Suriname. Suriname is in Central African Republic. Suriname is Central Africa. I arrived around 1 a.m. I was so tired. I got to the airport. airport. And they took me, they singled me out, took me to the VIP lounge. And I asked them, why am I here? I'm not a VIP. Nothing a VIP said, we have got instructions from State House. They processed everything. Gave us a convoy to go to Paramaribo, the capital city. And when I got there, I found a note in the office. Welcome, Pastor John. Pastor Laban from Uganda is also here. Please be notified that at 11 a.m. tomorrow, the president is ready to meet you. I said, for what? I'm here to preach the gospel. I'm not here to meet the president. So next morning, I met my... I, I, Look to him as a father. Pastor Laban Jumba. He said, Pastor Laban, do you have a word for the president? He said, no. I didn't ask for an appointment. I said, neither did I. But they took us. So what we did was to preach the gospel to him. We had no prophetic word for him, so we preached <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Give the glory to God. The reason I'm just sharing this with you is just to tell you, I'm not just picking up a theology. I have seen this practically happening. When God says, I have... You know what? The Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 22 says, therefore we are ambassadors in the place of Christ. And the Lord began to teach us about diplomatic cover, diplomatic immunity, diplomatic <laughs> immunity. You know why the Bible says every place you put your soul, that place I've given you. That is diplomatic language. The ambassador of America in South Africa is not on your soul. He's on his soil. Everywhere he puts his soil, that's American soil. That's why you cannot arrest him. Because it's not in South Africa. It's in his government in South Africa. You know why the Bible says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. If only we understood. Jesus said to Nathaniel. You believe because I said I saw you in the spirit under a tree. <laughs> you are going to see greater things than this. You are going to see heavens open. And the angels descend and ascend over the son of man. Brother, do you know that is your inheritance? That as you walk on this earth. 
You are not operating under the principalities and powers of this world. You are operating under open heavens where the angels of the Lord are ministering to you. Coming down and going up. Ministering to every one of your needs. But if anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the enemy steals that from him and you live like a pauper king solomon said one amazing thing i've seen in the world beggars riding on horses and princes walking on foot because they don't know who they are hallelujah if we knew what we are, we would not cry and say we don't have rights. We don't have authority. The Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. God turns it wherever he wants. But that God is your father. That means you have authority over the kings of this world. Because your father has their hearts in his hands. He can turn their hearts anywhere he wants. You are not at their mercy. They are at your mercy. <laughs> you don't even hear that. Sure. Greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. Greater are they on our side than on their side. Many Christians go about as victims. Oh, we don't have this, we don't have that. The government does not allow this. What is government? I'm not saying government has no authority. But do you remember when Herod the king sent a word to Jesus? What did Jesus reply? Go and tell that fox. I'm preaching today and I'm preaching tomorrow and on the third day I depart. That's what Jesus looked at that level government go read it in your bible said go tell that fox i'm preaching today and i'm preaching tomorrow and the third day i depart when Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, don't you know I have authority over you? Jesus said, hey, come on. You would not have an authority if my father did not give it to you. You are trembling at the authorities of this world because you don't understand. You don't understand how it is. Therefore, we are now Christ ambassadors. As though the Father was pleading with the world through us to be reconciled to Him. He made he who knew no sin to become sin. That we may become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. You know with our country Uganda. When the Lord began to talk to us about his calling on Uganda. He said. I am not going to send you to the nations to beg. I have wealth in your land to support my word. If there are even minerals that have not yet been discovered. And I want to say to you, since that time, 1995, to now, 
It's amazing how many new minerals have been discovered. <laughs> which are making many people in our government become so greedy they don't want <laughs> But every time we complain about people in government, the Lord say to us, I told you, don't point fingers. You choose where you want this nation to go. Do the right thing and the nation will go there. You fail to do the right thing and the nation will go the wrong direction. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. When I talk about nations, I get excited. Because I've seen the power of the kingdom of God. In Taiwan, Taiwan, I stood before the pastors. It was a bigger gathering than this. I had asked for a meeting with the pastors for five days. Monday to Friday. No one leaves. We all stay in the same region. My coordinator said, John, this is not Uganda. People here are busy. <laughs> I said, Pastor Lili, I'm not asking for Uganda. I know where Uganda is. I'm talking to Taiwan. He says, 50 pastors is too much. Can we do 20? I said, no. He said, okay, pray for us. In the end, she got 930. And they were together from Monday to Friday. And we started digging, and laying the foundation, a slowly building. By Thursday, I had been painting the pictures. And in the middle of my sharing, one pastor stood up said, are you saying that if we follow that pattern, we will see God move upon this nation in a period of not more than five years? I said, yes. He repeated the question, are you saying you know, when they were saying Pastor John, they said, Pastor John. Pastor John. Pastor John. Pastor John. Are you saying? I said, yes. And he turned around and they spoke in Chinese. They argued and shouted and pointed fingers. But afterwards, they calmed down. And he turned around and said, we will do it. <laughs> I was happy. Went back to my room. They, they continued talking the rest of the day. In the evening, Pastor Lily comes and says, Pastor John, the pastors have said they are going to do it. No, actually, that meeting had 330 sixty. 30. He said they, are, they said they will do it now. What next? What are the next steps? I said, I'm not sure. Give me up, up to tomorrow. And that night I was praying, Lord, what now? Every nation is unique from another. What worked in the other may not work in the other. What now? And he gave me only one step forward. That was November. In November. 1989. 1989. 19, 2009. Or 2009. He said, ask them in July, you are going to come here and you want to be with them for 30 days. If they are willing to do it, then I'll give you the next steps. When I told Pastor Lily, she laughed. She laughed. 
And I said, where are you laughing? He said, nothing. I'm going to tell them. And later on, she came back and said, they said, yes. They will do it. The only request is, they'll come Monday, Friday they go back to their churches. The next Monday they come back, Friday they go back to their churches. That's when we had 930 pastors. For 30 days. And we were able to take the A, B, C. How to disciple a nation how to break the yokes of darkness from a nation how to usher in the kingdom of God how to touch every sphere of society the government the families the economy and the social norms three years down the road the pastor of the biggest church in Taiwan was retiring. And he said, I've been praying what to do with the rest of my life. rest of my life. I'm going to go all over the world among the Chinese people and take this teaching of how to possess a nation. In the fourth year, the media was writing about it. The media in Taiwan was talking about God is moving mightily Taiwan. And one meeting we had in the city of Taipei, we had about 25,000 people seated in the street. They closed the street going to the presidential palace. And that's where we had our meeting. God showed signs in the skies. People took pictures of awesome things that were happening in the sky. The next day, newspapers in Hong Kong, the big headline, God visits Taiwan. And that went on for weeks. Talking about things God is doing in Taiwan. Then shortly after that, there was going to be elections. And one of the things they were going to cast a ballot for was to vote whether the country should allow gay marriages or not. And the forces that be were had been working for more than 20 years penetrating everywhere in society putting their representatives to promote that cause. The church began to pray. But other churches were saying, what's wrong if we don't want to do that? Let others do it if they want it. At one time, they sent me a newspaper clip from a member of parliament in Taipei. He was speaking in parliament and was arguing. We cannot allow this opposition to happen. This opposition is coming from Uganda. We are not Uganda. We are not in the same class as Uganda. Uganda cannot influence Taiwan. In the Taiwanese parliament. Parliament in Taiwan. And I read and said, God, this can only be you. 
and the elections came the, 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 the election and they were all amazed because the vote was defeated give a glory to God Come on. I was coming from South Korea went to Hong Kong I was going to Malaysia after that from Malaysia to Taiwan and they rang me and said John please don't come you are on wanted list. You are meddling in the internal affairs of Taiwan. And the moment you arrive at the airport, you are going to be arrested. And the people who know their God shall be strong. They shall work exploits. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that they, they said these words about the apostles in the book of Acts. The men who turn cities upside down have come here. Those men were ordinary fishermen. <laughs> ordinary tax collectors. Just like you and me. But when they got to know their God, they were strong. They worked exploits. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I John, wanted to go with you to say, What is a nation before God? What makes up a nation before God? Because a nation, a na nations are people groups of one of common identity and common destiny. And the identities are four. Territory, language, ethnicity social group social groups if you took these and applied them to south, Am south africa, africa you have different ethnic groups you have different languages but, and you have different territories within south africa but at the end of the day you have this territory called Republic of South Africa. That is one territory that you can fight for. To which you can say, Lord, let, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this land as it is in heaven. And above all, nations are people groups with a common destiny. What is a destiny? Destiny is the purpose for which God created any being. And in the case of a nation, the purpose for which God allowed that nation to exist on earth, at such a time as this, if you go back and read the book of Exodus, numbers, numbers. you see God say to Moses, he is taking them to the promised land. And says, you are going to, tomorrow you are going to meet the people called the Edomites. Don't attack them. For I have not given you their land. Ask them to allow you to go through their land. And when the, Edom, when the Edomites refused, he said, go the other way. Acts chapter 17 verse 26 says, out of one blood, God made all the nations of the world and gave them the exact places where they shall live and the times appointed for them. So God knows where every nation is and why it is there. And he already has times 
appointed for his, for his visitation to those people. I will say that again. God has got times appointed for him to visit each nation. That's why in, his, in Jeremiah chapter 6, he said, look at your priests Look at your men. Look at your women. Look at your children. All of you are filthy and defiled. What will you do at the time of my visitation? John chapter 16 says, John chapter 16, when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll convict the world of what? Sin. Righteousness and judgment. The spirit either brings revival or judgment. The Lord, when the Lord spoke to us in Uganda, he said for more than 10, 20 years, I have been sending prophets to you and I've raised many prophets among you calling you to humble yourself and seek my face. Now I want you to know the time of my visitation upon your nation is very close. You are either going to experience revival or judgment. The choice is yours. South Africa, South Africa, I'll say to you, if there are men and women who know how to read the signs of the times, the time of your visitation is very the time of your visitation is very close. The question is, what will it be? Revival or judgment? I started the first day by sharing with you experiences from Ethiopia, from Kenya, Kenya where the Lord gave them an opportunity. I remember my very first time to go to America. This was 1996. And he gave me a prophetic word for America while I was there in Chicago. If you go to the internet, it's there. It's there. It was recorded then. And, and just Kake. a prophetic word for America by John Molinde. And the Lord spoke about three waves of judgment coming to America. One was to do with the economy. The other was to do with the rights. People's rights. And then the other was to do with the fabric, I mean, natural calamities that are going to come upon the land. When I shared, even me could not picture it. That was 1996. Today, you go listen to that prophetic word and you listen to the news, you think there was, it was spoken yesterday. It's not something that was spoken yesterday. It was spoken in 1996. <laughs> so, Jolly. my prayer is that somebody here will say to the Lord, Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me for my nation. South Africa. South Africa. I have not had the opportunity to really go into the teaching. But let me just give this summary in the next two, three minutes. The Bible says the whole world is in the sway of the wicked one. So the whole world is in the control of the wicked one. So the great commission it's not just to go and start your ministry. Uh -uh. That's not the interest of the Lord. 
The interest is that we go in overthrow the darkness in the nations and let his kingdom come. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need to understand how the darkness operates. The darkness operates at three levels. Level, the lowest level darkness in each person's life and when the time comes we shall describe it and analyze it enough for each one of us to recognize darkness in themselves and as you fight that darkness and reject it the beginning of breakthrough the breakthrough that redeems a nation starts with an individual. And that's where we get what we call the breakthrough prayer. Which draws the presence of the Lord upon your life. Like a pillar of his presence. The second level is in society. society in families in the economy economy in the governance Puso. in the ways of life it acts as what the bible calls in ephesians the course of life in other words even when you know the truth it forces you to conform romans 12 says i beseech you brethren be ye not conformed to the patterns of this world. Many Christians know the worldly system and they know the will of God. But they pay lip service to God's will and they conform to the patterns of this world. Then they pray, Lord, come visit my country. Do you know what Jesus said to Peter? The devil has asked to sift you. And he has been given the authority. But I've prayed for you. That your faith may not fail. After you have overcome. You will help your brethren. You want to bring revival to your nation? Overcome at your level after you've overcome you will help the other that is the most visible of all warfare because even when you say Lord I'm not going to go back to that pattern you go back home and the family members say what's wrong with you we don't do things like that here we do this they put pressure upon you to conform you go to your job and they put pressure on you to conform when you go to Taiwan the men who broke through and brought the presence of God in their workplaces. They had to say no to their bosses. For years, they had, the boss would send the documents. Sign, please. And they would sign huge amounts of money. Above the cost. And they would sign. And at the end of the day, when the money comes, the boss takes his share and lets the other trickle down. Then comes this brother, he says, Sir, my God does not allow me to do that anymore. He says, Your God? Who is your God? He says, His name is Jesus. You mean he spoke to you? said yes said, okay give it to your assistant to sign if I, said no my lord does not allow that Are practice anymore it takes a stand 
And later on, the department of that brother was was about, the about the best the performing job. in the entire electronic factory. He became the best performer of the year. Other departmental heads, heads would come and say, what do you do? How can you help us? And he said, we can start prayer altars. 2008, in the world slump, economic slump, every factory in Taiwan was doing overtime. This brother said, no overtime in my department. Go and be with your families. And the man said, we don't know what to do with our families. He said, go and buy a Bible. Sit down with your family. Read the Bible. Almost all those men and women and their families gave their lives to Jesus Christ. The stories, the ordinary people, simply standing for the kingdom. Students in universities, the student the university. and high schools. The high school. One widow with her son brought a billionaire woman to give her life to Jesus. Because of them being faithful to the kingdom. If only we knew who we are and what we have. There is nothing. Didn't Jesus say, nothing will be impossible to you? Isn't that what he said? Nothing will be impossible to you. So, tomorrow, I understand we are having a meeting in the morning with church leaders. I'll endeavor to go as practical as possible. And tomorrow evening, we'll try again to be as practical as possible and maybe to share on the world with the Go Nations and how the church is being mobilized to come together so that we may finish the great commission within this generation. And I believe you are part of that. South Africa must be brought into the kingdom of God. In this generation. Hallelujah. Amen. So because of time, I want to say that let, let us rise and begin talk to the Lord. And the first and most important item I would like us to pray for is pray for the church. Pray for the church leaders. Pray for the ministry leaders that the spirit of the Lord will come upon each of them and open their understanding and revive their callings and make them stand to lead God's people. As each one stands in his gap, the army of the Lord will rise up and we will march forward. South Africa shall be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask the leaders to come forward. I love it when leaders from the land lead the prayers. I could stand here and lead, but it is a different thing because God says, I look for a man among them. So that there is a voice from the land calling upon the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you so much. Message first is to ask the leaders, the pastors. The body cannot be able to move unless we have understood the message. And we are prepared tonight to humble ourselves that Lord, 
you have spoken to us. Hallelujah. I believe we have understood the message as the shepherds and leaders. That what God was saying to us. Can it be a simple and easy thing to us to say, Lord, we are giving our lives again to you. There are so many scales that have closed our eyes, our spiritual eyes. We cannot see. We are not able to hear you. And our minds cannot understand. I'm going to ask Pastor Lisunzi can you come on the stage? We are going to pray Prophet Tulula Pastor Chasbani maybe to get others to come. We, we are to talk to our father because it is because of his grace that he has brought his servant to come and talk with us in this level. No one of us can say, I don't understand, I didn't get that word. Can you come on stage with us? And the whole of us in this place, we are going to pray that Father, here am I. I am prepared, Lord, to do your will. Father, here am I. I am prepared to do your will. I've been busy there in different activities, but it may not be your will. I thought all along I'm doing what you want me to do. And God spoke to us about nations. Can we begin to open our mouth and talk to our Father tonight? Can you take your microphones, servants of God, come and stand before Open your mouth and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Pray. Father, we pray. pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Knowing you break I will hear from heaven. You said, my Lord. And you will hear the language. All of us. And I hear your elbow. And I hear your your Oh God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, 
you are holy you are holy our father you are holy samantha we dwell we dwell be holy for i am holy be holy for i am holy Oh, la baba ya dolobosa. 